So Link's Awakening's finally out, a fresh Switch remake of the 1993 Game Boy game. The story of Link's adventure on the island of Koholint, a tropical paradise hiding a cryptic secret. But the main story of the game isn't the only secret hidden in Koholint. There's a bunch of little easter eggs, references, cameos and more in the game. Most of these were carried over from the original, such as the shopkeeper nuking you if you steal from him, or Marin's various dialogue options when you take her around the world, but there are also some new things that the remake has included. The game's only been out for a day or so, but the original's been out for more than 25 years at this point, so we'll try and avoid talking about the really well-known easter eggs in this video. So without further ado, let's run through five of my favourite little secrets, easter eggs and references to other games found in Link's Awakening. The Ghost House, Bottle Grotto Bottle Grotto is the second dungeon in Link's Awakening, found in the Gaponga Swamp in the north of the island. It's protected by giant, tough flora, so we need to force our way through with Bow Wow the Chain Chomp. The dungeon, being very early in the game, is very simple, and the boss, Genie, can be beaten by picking up his jar and smashing it against the wall, allowing us to hack away at his vulnerable body. But Bottle Grotto hides a secret in its music. The beginning of the theme is actually a remixed version of A Link to the Past's Dark World Dungeon theme. But that's not all, the musical easter egg gets a whole lot more interesting. Bottle Grotto is the only dungeon in the game in which Boo Buddies can be found, obvious references to Super Mario's Boo enemies. They can't be killed with a sword, only by lighting a torch in the room, which allows Link to grab the power bracelet which they were guarding. And the second half of the Bottle Grotto dungeon's theme music is this. A remix of the Super Mario World Ghost House theme. Mario references are everywhere in Link's Awakening, and this musical easter egg was present in the original too, but it's even more prevalent in the remake. Loftwing Statue Link's Awakening's trendy game got a fresh coat of paint in the remake, featuring a physics-based claw which is often a lot more infuriating than you'd want it to be. The trendy game can win Link all sorts of items, from chamber stones to seashells to heart pieces, and if you take Marin to the game she can even pick the shopkeeper himself up, causing you to get kicked out. But it's not the game itself we're interested in. On the left hand side of the room there are a few statues. One of Azora, which are enemies found across Koholint, and more interestingly, what looks to be a Loftwing, carved in Link's Awakening's toy-like chibi style. Loftwings are of course the sacred birds found at the very beginning of the Zelda timeline in Skyward Sword, so it's cool to see a little nod to them in Link's Awakening. The Blooper Statue Speaking of statues and the trendy game, Link's Awakening's Switch remake didn't add too much on top of the original. But one thing it did add was a set of figures Link can win from the trendy game and place in pedestals in various houses across Marbe Village. Starting with a Chow Chow figure, Link can win various figures all the way up to Bao Bao, all referencing different Super Mario enemies. But like I said, we're trying not to include the super obvious references in Link's Awakening in this video, so we need to go deeper. A reference within a reference. The blooper statue can be placed in Old Man Ulrira's house, along with the Cheap Cheap statue. When Link wins it, the description reads, it's not so menacing outside of the water, which makes sense for an enemy based on a squid. But the trophy description in the Old Man's house instead reads, Blooper. It's the hot new thing with kids. A pretty on-the-nose Splatoon reference, pointing out the similarity in design between the blooper and the squids from Splatoon. Inklings in Splatoon can transform from kid to squid and back again, immortalised for all time in one of Nintendo's more infamous commercials. 
Rubber Cuckoo. Let's go for a slightly smaller one here. Not as much a reference or easter egg as it is a tiny detail I just absolutely love. After the trading sequence is complete, we can find the magnifying lens under the mermaid statue, allowing us to see two secret characters we couldn't before, the secret Goria on Toronbo Beach and the secret Zora in Animal Village. But one cool detail I absolutely love in the Zora's house is this. Instead of a rubber duck in the bath, it's a little cuckoo. It just sums up the level of attention to detail that went into this remake. The Nintendo Gallery on the phone. Ulrira is a reclusive old man living in Mabe Village, sitting alone at his desk near his phone. He's incredibly shy and won't talk to Link face to face, instead offering him hints via the telephone booths around Koholint. But not only can Link call from the telephones around the island, he can also call from the old man's phone in his house. If we pick up the receiver, we get one of the strangest conversations in an already strange game. Yes, it's the Bucket Mouse. Thanks for calling. In the original game's Japanese version, calling from the old man's phone will result in someone picking up and saying, yes, this is Bucket Mouth. According to Kazuaki Morita, Bucket Mouth was a real fishing shop in Japan, which closed in 2010, the owner of which had inspired the design of the fishing hole man from Ocarina of Time. In the English version of the original game, this was incorrectly translated to Bucket Mouse, resulting in the weird phone call we get here, which is apparently carried over to the remake. But interestingly, the remake seems to have changed the phone call in other languages. In all other languages I tested, including Japanese, Link will get a call from the Nintendo Gallery from the Wind Waker, asking for a photograph. The Nintendo Gallery is a small shop in the Wind Waker, and if you provide a colour pictograph of a character or an enemy, Karlov will craft a figurine based on them. Link's Awakening's remake features a toy-like aesthetic, where all characters look like little figurines in a diorama. Perhaps these phone calls from the Nintendo Gallery are referencing this new toy-like art style. Either way, while other languages feature this really cool new easter egg, the English translations just stuck with good old Bucket Mouse. Which in itself is a pretty interesting easter egg to a character accidentally created by a bad translation. Thanks for watching this video, are there any cool easter eggs or references I've missed? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.